uh, do you believe in ghosts or the paranormal? I so want to believe. I do, sure, I do. Yeah, I do actually. If there was, if there was a ghost in that cemetery, like they sure as hell don't want anything to do with me. I believe there are spirits that are um, not laid to rest due to especially like uh, the violence. I did before I started working for McMinimins and then working in older historic buildings. That belief definitely hasn't gone away. <laughs> Um, I don't care. Alright, I can always film on all of it. I just hope that it doesn't die. She's gonna set the cake on fire. I probably will. Yeah, I will. What role do you play with Bonefur and like what do you do there? So I am on the board for the Friends of Lone Fur. Particularly on the board, I act as a publications director. Well, I am a historical tour guide, but I feel like my role as a tour guide is to tell a little Portland history and, and combine it with the characters together in a really cool story. What role do you play at Edgefield? And like, what do you do there? Yeah, I'm the hotel manager. If you can think of it, and if it's hotel related, I am doing it. It's so fun to summon demons. How to play. How to play. Confirm mm -hmm. it's a game. Well, yeah, of course it's a game. Okay, sit opposite your partner with your board between you. Also, <laughs> do you know that there's apparently um, a, a thing that if you look through the Hole of the planchette, you can see the ghost. Stop. I'm really disrespectful. Yeah, this is really mean. Because this works. We're like, going to get possessed. I'm going to get killed. Do you think there are ghosts at the cemetery? I do. I don't know if it's like uh, you have to be the right person to, to see or sense something like that. Like, I grew up watching this anime called Paranoia Agent. Let's go over this one more time. And the whole premise of it is that... Um, this this like entity comes at you only when you're the most paranoid it's kind of how i feel where i, I like i wonder do i just come in too casual um whereas my my friend kristen she has all of these incredible ghost stories <laughs> it's like why you why do you get that i mean like i've heard people talk like very detailed about the different encounters they've seen like a guy with a coat or a guy with a cane, or a woman who's weeping. Like we'll, we'll be giving tours and, and people say that they saw someone. And the one that I really remember is down here in block two, there was a woman who lost her children. And supposedly she came uh, after they died and brought a rocking chair and she rocked there, staying with her children. And people have heard like a rocking chair and they've heard children laughing. Is there a ghost story about Edgefield that you tell most frequently to your customers? Yeah, I usually will mention room 215, which is the one where we found the pentagram. The one that's my personal favorite that I will also tell is a lot of people will report seeing um, a like nurse, a lady in a nurse's uniform, and she's supposed to be very nice. <laughs> she's supposed to be like if you're wandering around lost on property and don't know where you're going, that's when guests kind of tend to see her. I guess, is anyone here? Wow. <laughs> okay, let's ask a different question. Okay. Okay, can you give us a sign that you're here? <laughs> what is that? Did it move? I'll tell you the only weird story. One afternoon, I came here, probably late afternoon. I was walk, walked up this road, walked around here. I didn't see many other people. And when I came back, in the middle of this road was a chair, like a kitchen 
chair. I don't know how it got there. I didn't see anybody bring it in, and it felt ghost-like to me. But that's the only thing I've ever experienced. All right, so let's coming. do another one. Yes. What are we going for? Um. Okay, well, first, I want to make sure that it was not a man on the wall. <laughs> Or anything like that. It was that, like, you who knocked on the wall or whatever. I don't like that it's moving towards yes, Audrey. Well, yeah, but just the fact that it's moving in general. <laughs> oh, no! That was totally a person. No. Have you ever experienced anything at the hotel? Uh, so when we were closing in March. We had to close the whole hotel down. We we shut our doors completely for about three months. For three or four days between the last day the guests stayed with us and my last day before I went on temporary, I was the only person in the building and I had to go into every room to make sure that curtains were closed and everything was secured and there wasn't anything out of place. And by the time I was halfway through like third floor, I felt so strongly like I was not alone that I started actually like talking out loud because it felt very much like all of the energy and all of the spirits in the building were concerned that normally it's a really bustling place. And then all of the people were now gone. And so as I was going through the building, I was like, it's okay, we're gonna come back, I promise. <laughs> just for a little bit but it just very much felt like I was not alone in a way that I haven't experienced since and I don't think it was just because I was alone in the building dude no <laughs> we on. can we like lock ourselves in you want me to block the door? yeah okay are you a good spirit or entity we should oh my god avoid what should we avoid? Asking if it's gonna kill I'm us. I'm gonna ask. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna die. Who's gonna die? Yeah, give us a name. Yeah. You're moving this. I'm literally not moving You're it. You're definitely I wouldn't move it, it to your name. Oh, well, yes you would. And I know uh, we've got, oh God, what was her name? I think her name was Addie? Yeah, Addie Decker. So Addie Decker, um, from what I remember, she worked as a, a sex worker at a brothel, and um, that was to provide for her family. She had a couple of children that she had to provide for, specifically after her husband died. She lost one of her children as well, right after her husband died. The story goes that she currently watches over her grave, and she she's on the corner path. And as you round the corner, a lot of times people will say that that she's there brushing off her headstone. How are we gonna kill her? This is not funny anymore. It is. If anyone's well, moving else? it, it's you. It's, it's you. not me. Why would I want me to die? Hell. Is it gonna spell your name? That doesn't make any sense. Hi. You're moving. That's You're moving make, it. I'm literally I'm not, not moving, moving it. it. What should we ask it? I don't know. Um, well, I don't think anything is here, because you're moving it. Oh, uh, well, one more. One more. Fine. Is Audrey going to die tonight at the hands of me? <laughs> I'm going to be done now. <laughs> Come on. Whatever. I'm not enjoying this. You're obviously moving I'm it. I'm not moving it. A demon! There's no demon. They yeah, don't exist. Is. There was also another thing that I just remembered. So when we were in room 40, uh, there's that like wardrobe that's next to the door and mm -hmm. Lily opened it and then the other door just like swung open on its own. And then we were reading in the ghost log that somebody had that same experience. Like they hadn't touched the wardrobe though, but the door just like swung open and they had to go and close it. And I was just like, that's a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> that happened to us. <laughs> I'm glad you guys had an experience. That's so fun. It was definitely, because at first I didn't really think anything of it because I'm just like, oh, the door just opened. But then we read that somebody else had like happened, like the same thing had happened to them. And I'm just like, that makes it a little weirder. <laughs> yeah.
Der Fährt jetzt weg!